What's happening, YouTube? Okay, so I'm with my lovely partner sitting in the garland pose. She's from Endless Yoga. Take a look. My elbows are pushing my knees apart, see? And I'm sitting deep, arching my back. So my glutes are getting a stretch, hamstrings, ankles, and look at my wrists. So this is an awesome pose for someone like me who exercises a lot. And so, let's get to the topic, which is, don't diet, fix the programming. And so, this is gold information because I'm programmed. I'm programmed through tradition, through my culture, and through society. And so, if I don't look at my programming, diet hacks will never work. Diets will never work because I'm programmed. And so one of the examples of how I was programmed was through my meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Perfect example. Some people in other parts of the world don't eat like us, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Plus the programming of having pancakes, eggs, sausage, bacon for breakfast is programming. In Asia, they don't eat that. They eat white rice with uh, veggies and meats and soups. And so it's different programming. And so the programming that I have made me mechanized towards living a certain way. And so having desserts after every meal is programmed. So as a child, after every meal at home, desserts programmed. Then when I grew up a little, I went to restaurants. I got programmed to eat according to the program of the restaurants, which is soup served first, then salad, then appetizer, then the main meal, and then dessert, that's programming. And so once I got used to that type of programming, I expected it. And so I automatically turned to that type of programming because I was programmed. <laughs> and so, I'm programmed. Where's dessert? I'm expecting it. Or if there's no appetizers, oh my God. And so I had to look at the programming to fix the problem I had from the programming. Because over three, four decades of eating a certain way, I packed on the pounds, I got really heavy, and then I got sick from being heavy. And so while I was taking on this diet fad and that diet fad, I didn't realize that I was battling against being programmed. And that's what made it difficult because I had to fight. No desserts, no eating this, no eating that. I had to fight, it's a big fight. But it's not a big fight if I look at the programming and I didn't know how to do that. And that's why I'm talking about it right now. I didn't know how to look at how I was programmed and therefore I was mechanical. And just that idea bothers me enough to pop out of it. I hate the idea that I am programmed and that I am just a mechanical being, which means like a robot. And that idea alone helped me pop right out of being programmed. Like one of my problems that I had to fix was that I had toasted bread with butter every single morning with coffee. And I did that for years. And so it was so tough on me, but I didn't have this idea with me about me being programmed. And so I suffered through the progress because I had to reduce from seven days a week to six, to five, to four, to three, almost reprogram, which is cool, but for me, the type of person that I am, I hate the idea, you're programmed, you're a robot. And so now, me on the path to stay at a certain weight, having this at my disposal, that I don't want to be freaking programmed or a robot, nor a mechanical being, I popped right out of it. So therefore, I look at desserts differently, I look at the courses of meals differently. I look at it differently because when I eat, I eat for my own satiation, not to eat programmed. And so in other words, I'll take a bite of this and a bite of that. And if I'm full, I'm finished. 
I'm not programmed anymore to stuff myself because I see the programming. I don't need to have the dessert and the appetizers and the course is the way it is. The appetizer is still food. If it gets me full, I won't eat anymore. And I also know how to order because I realized my programming was to order blindly. Oh, give me this because I'm hungry. And so I'm choosing with my eyes. And so while I'm choosing with my eyes, my hunger is calling the shots. And so I'm ordering this and that and that just in case. I almost did that today. And I caught myself. I said, no, just order what you just did. If you're still hungry after, then order it. But I wasn't because I was cool with what I ate. So I didn't have to have it. And so this realization of how I'm programmed is absolutely an awesome technique, perhaps. I don't know what to call it. I'm also programmed to the idea that food equals happiness. Yummy for your tummy. Every single food out there that they're trying to sell has some type of character attached to it. Some type of cartoon to every single thing. And it's not their fault. They have to get us through our childhood. Of course, food will make you happy. Food will make you feel better. Go out, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Don't deprive yourself. You deserve it. They use those techniques. They have to. And so it's not their fault. And so I was programmed to associate food with happiness. That's all good. I get it. I get that that's the way I was brought up and programmed. I get it. But I get it also that when I see that I'm programmed, that I don't have to continue that mechanical way of being. And so I'm breaking it. I'm not going to deny it that a lot of these foods that are no good for me, they're really good. And I like to have them once in a while. And so I do. But I'm not programmed to have them all the time, all the time. I'm programmed to have coffee every single morning. It's structured that way. But I realize that it's programming, and so I'm eating accordingly. I'm never stuffed. I'm never, oh my God, I ate so much. And I'm also not programmed to stuff my face and then talk about dieting. I'm cutting out that programming too. I'm not going to engage in any more programming. We're programmed, I mean. <laughs> and so I fixed this programming. And so, like I said, I see everything differently now. And that's the beauty of what I'm doing. Is that I see a cake and I go, wow, that's lovely. That looks so good, but I don't have it. I can see it with my eyes that it looks so good. And I can enjoy it with my eyes, but I don't need to have it. Because to have it means to resume to that programming. If I have it, it'll be once in a while. And so I took a look at all my patterns and I started to correct my patterns. I started to eat at different times rather than having breakfast at this time, lunch at this time, dinner at this time, snack at this time. Now I eat accordingly, which means that if I'm not hungry during dinner time, I'm not going to eat. If I feel a little snacky, I'll take a scoop of cottage cheese or something and I walk off. And so I'm automatically operating based on what my body dictates. I'm out of that path of being a mechanical being. And it feels good to just go about life accordingly. I eat this, I eat that. Oh yeah, wow, well, let's go there, let's have it, cool. But I'm not like, oh my God, I'm so stuffed. Oh, oh, I can't, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna eat salad. Oh, my, and then the programming kicks in, only for me to repeat the same thing over and over and over. That's what programming does. It repeats the same thing over and over and over. And so that's over. And my chat is also over. I think it's an awesome freaking chat. And so, and to the next one, catch it later.